should take roll call here before we do anything else. Make sure we're all here. Jonathan Brewster? Here. Salsa? Here. Billy Wagyu? Michael Wallace? Michael Posh? Here. Henry Greenlee? Here. Let the records show that Billy Wagyu and Michael Wallace are absent. Pledge of Allegiance? Yep. Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with truth and justice and all. Haven't said that since ninth grade. <laughs> I'm amazed I remember it. Okay, public comment. Uh, if uh, you wish to address the commission uh, on something that is not on the agenda, uh, we can do that right now. So if there's anyone, no? <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure if we were streaming live, if there might be someone who would be, nope. Okay. Uh, reorganization on the commission. Actually, number five, the administration oath of office for the new commissioners. We'll... So actually, we're going to, um, I'm going to conduct the oath of office. If you would just please stand and put your right hand uh, at, repeat your name, uh, and then repeat repeat after me. I do solemnly swear oh, yeah, you've already that I will support yeah. and defend the Constitution of the United States. and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. You passed with a C. <laughs> <clears throat> okay sorry to jump ahead there uh so now the reorganization okay that's right okay it's up to you sir Okay, so I am up. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Ray Greenlee. I've been with the city for over 16 years. Um, we have a rec staff of two and a half people. I'm the half person. Uh, Nyant is uh, our rec coordinator and Trent Williams is our specialist. Uh, they're not unable to make it tonight because they're at the rec center running it. So I can't have them leave to come over here uh, at the, for this at this time. But eventually, we hope to get them over here so you guys can meet them and stuff like that in person. So let me pass out. I have some information here that I information here packets that I will pass out to you. Thank you. Oops. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, I apologize. My allergies are just on fire right now, but uh, I'll try to get through it the best I can. Um, what you have in front of you is a staff report that uh, we did 
uh, and got approval for city council. What we're looking to do is <clears throat> we want to hire a company that can develop uh, parks and do a master plan for us, uh, recommending uh, what recreation programs, what the what the citizens want. Um, you can go on our website and you can get the whole thing. I didn't want to print all the pages out of the RFP, but essentially it'll help us to identify the needs of the community. They're uh, to do surveys or to get input from the rec commission, um, essentially anybody who uh, wants to have some input on what the city's needs are. So we're looking forward to that. I haven't sent it out yet. We're going to put it out in July and I'm hoping by August to uh, have it ready to award and I'll go before city council to uh, have their approval. And once we do that, then they'll start working on uh, overall, basically we need a, a game plan. We were looking at, uh, to do something for the next five years. So we wanna see what kind of park space would be available if, um, you know, things like that, taking uh, existing parks and upgrading them, uh, programming again. So, uh, I wanted to kind of give you an update on that. So that's going to be happening here. And then they'll be coming to meet with the council and also with the commissioners. So any questions on that? So this um, company that's you're looking to hire or, or it's going to come up with a master plan. Doesn't the, the city has a master plan? Isn't recreation included in that? Uh, this is a master plan just for recreation. Okay. So what this does is this will help all of us to figure out specifically what the needs are in the city. So we may have opinions of what we like. We've done surveys. I've had people say, you know, I'd like to have this and like to have that. We're going to get a consensus that'll come back and it'll say, this is where your needs are. This is where, what people are wanting in the community. And then we can focus on those things and see if we have the financial means to make those improvements or to purchase a new park, things like that. But you haven't hired the firm yet. So. No, this is just the RFP, which is a request for proposal. It'll be a sealed bid, and companies that specialize in this will apply, hopefully, and uh, we'll go through it. We, uh, I'm working with one of our analysts. He's going to put uh, basically a rating system on their proposal, and then we'll select the best one. And then, again, I will do another staff report. I'll bring it to council for approval. And once we get approval, then we can start moving forward. And then they'll, I'll have them come in. Part of the uh, requirements is to come in and meet the commissioners and then also uh, consult with uh, um, city council. How much does one of these cost, Ray? At this point in time, I don't know. We're, we're factoring or we're figuring somewhere between 100,000 and maybe 125,000 for the whole package. Um, it could be lower. We don't, we, we kind of internally we're figuring somewhere between a hundred to $125,000 and it won't come out of the general fund. This will come out of the rec. Uh, we have basically buckets of money that we can utilize for things like this. So this will come out of that. So it'll have no impact at all to the general fund. So we're not taking it out there. So any other mm -hmm. questions on that? Mm -hmm. I'd be curious to see what they come up with. I, um, I have my own thoughts on this, so I'd be right. curious. Yeah, and it's going to be a while. It's not going to be right from the start. Right. It's going to take them a while. They're going to be doing surveys. But the thing that's helpful, we've done surveys. Uh, again, if you go on the report when we did this, um, I had put our surveys that we did back in December of uh, uh, 2023. And a lot of what people come up and ask um, – I want this, I want that. And when we did the surveys, that really wasn't the most popular thing or what most people were requesting. Our number one in our survey was more soccer, more indoor soccer. Mm -hmm. So currently we we pretty much fill our soccer each time. Uh, we're doing a starting our next league right now. And uh, we have 550 kids signed up and we have people on waiting list and we have to turn them away because we just can't. We can't do any more than that. We don't have enough staff or we don't have enough indoor soccer fields. So, but, uh, boy, the Kmart building be perfect for that. <laughs> that's been under that. We've talked about that. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Absolutely. Do, do we have room to add another soccer field or no? We, uh, as far as indoor? Yeah. Uh, we do with some modifications. Uh, one of the things, I don't really want to say a lot about it right now, but one, there was some initial plans that uh, we'll discuss with the firm about possibly doing some expansion at the uh, rec center. And if we were able to do that, then we could um, move some of the stuff out of there and then we could add, actually we could add three more, not the same really? size. We could add one more large one. And I was looking at two of the little, little people, little kids, the uh, smaller ones. For yeah, the smaller kids, yeah. So that way they can run their part because they don't need right now. We split the field in half because it's just too much. They can't run that. Part. Yeah. So, so we'd look at something like that. How are the adult leagues doing right now? Are they sold out too? For soccer, yeah, uh, we don't offer any adult leagues. We had one that was independent that we're renting the facility, but um, for the most part, no, we don't really have anything uh, going on. Okay, for uh, recreation for the adults. For the um, uh, how how would that affect the room that's the the layout right now? Like, would we would what what would be lost if anything? Well, we would have to expand the building in order for that to take place. Or if we put in, um, we could put in possibly one small, which would be over there towards uh, the PAL program or the where that area, that section is right there by the uh, basketball. Uh, there's an, a section that people utilize for just sitting there or watching games, that type of stuff. They're used at cafeteria tables. That would be one spot without losing anything really uh, at that point. And then even if we did look into something, we could look at, see if something maybe be portable that we could set up and then move if it's going to be for the kids, a small one. So it wouldn't be a, a very large field. So or, the smaller field would be like a half field almost. Yeah. For the children. Yeah. It's, um, there's really no standard. It's just whatever you can kind of, Put up and that would work for them because like right now we're using our our one our uh, indoor one and we split it in half and it's actually a lot wider than what it needs to be but uh, that's what we have so you know we're utilizing it that way when we ran a couple of years ago we used to run it as full basically full, full field and the kids by the time they ran towards the end they were they were done they were just winded so we split it up so we could run two games at once and it's much quicker. The kids are able to score because the other way it's so long, they kick it and it just, nobody's, it just goes back and forth and nobody really scores. Yeah. So we, we did that. The parents like it. And so we've stuck with it. There's a, I've seen, I, for lack of a better term, a dome. So it would be an outdoor facility, but there'd be an overhang mm -hmm. that uh, protects them from the sun somewhat. Mm -hmm. Um in addition to that, I know there's an organization or a business or something that runs indoor soccer programs. Mm -hmm. um, I know of one in Paso Robles, um, mm -hmm. but I don't recall the name. But they they have basically taken a warehouse and converted it to an indoor soccer facility, and then they, you know, make their money by charging and right. all that kind of stuff. Um, right. But that also could be an option, and it might be less of a burden on the city staff at that point. Yeah, it's that's kind of a fine line because now you you're kind of a you're a private entity type yeah. thing. Yeah. Um so the only benefit the city would really see on that would be is if we were leasing uh, the building or the space to them. Um which, you know, there's there's all kinds of possibilities of what right. we could do. Right. And that's one of the reasons why we want to bring a company in and find right. out what the public right. opinion is and what, you know, every, we're looking to get everybody that we can's opinion to see what would be yeah. beneficial for the city. Um, we do like running our leagues and stuff like that. Cause we can control um, a lot of things. Um, yeah, no, it, I, I get that. Yeah. yeah. So, but, uh, but yeah, I I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, a company coming in and basically giving us a blueprint to say, okay, this is what we could look at right. and work on. And then we're not sitting up here going, well, 
you know, I like to do this, you like to do that, and we don't really get any traction. This way we have facts and we could, you know, move forward. Right. Anything else on that? Okay. Next in front of you, I have uh, some flyers of programs. Uh, as I spoke right now, this is the, uh, we have a soccer camp that's going to be going on from um, July 8th through July 11th. And we do these camps to help kids uh, learn how to play soccer, uh, gives them the ability to get some skill sets if they haven't had any, uh, puts them in an environment where they can learn and they're not embarrassed if they don't know how to play. So that's that's coming up, and um, we're we're very uh, blessed to have the uh, the Moore High School. They they run this for us, and they bring the students over, and it helps them also to, you know, um, give back to the community, teach the kids how to play, and uh, give them some skill uh, sets and stuff like that. So, you ever reached out to West Hills College for soccer? Yeah, let's um, see if they. They would have people available to help them. We we do. We reach out to everybody that we can reach oh. out to. We we post stuff on our website. We talk to everybody who comes in. Whenever we get signups, we'll ask people if they want to uh, be a coach. We ask people if they want to rep. You know those types of things. Right. So we're we're always trying to network because we can never have enough. The next one is. Let's see, make sure this will just put in here. Um, Sorry, just going back to the the um the soccer camp is is in a way is it basically like a feeder program into into the the high school basically because uh, you're no. mentoring kids to eventually, eventually you're basically saying you know you could eventually be like me essentially if if you think about it yeah it's it's directed at the age from six to twelve years old. Um, it was really intended. We had a lot of parents come to us and wanted to get a camp because a lot of the this age group, the kids have never played. And so we were trying to encourage them to get involved and look maybe towards high school and things like that to play soccer. So um, we hope that they do. I mean, soccer is one of the most popular sports out there. And with the high school being involved, you know, they can kind of see – the skills that the high school students have and maybe it'll, you know, click and say, yeah, you know, that's something I'd like to do. Yeah. It's good for them too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So again, like I said, we have our indoor soccer league uh, going um, currently. And um, the next thing we have on our list here is our flag football. So our flag football season will be starting on 9 14 and run through 11 12. Um, we've grown this program also quite a bit. Um, we joined the NFL last year, the NFL league. So everything that we purchase comes directly from the NFL. So we get NFL approved jerseys with team logos, um, which the children get to keep. They get uh, flags, which are the nice flags that have the uh, they have like a suction cup. So when you pull them, it makes a popping noise. So it makes it easier for the refs to know when the flags have been pulled. And we run our divisions from our Pee Wee League, uh, which are three and four, all the way up to uh, eighth grade. And it's it's pretty awesome. Um, I was fortunate enough from the very start to start this program uh, as a coach and um, I started in the peewees and it was uh, basically herding cats, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> last year I got back into it. I went through all the divisions. And I, then I became a ref and then uh, I got a little too old to try to run around and keep up with everybody. So Funny how um, it does. Um, so I decided uh, I got back into it because my grandson was in it. And uh, so I helped coach and uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, challenging, but it's a lot of fun. It's uh, pretty neat to see. So um, we definitely, like I said, we have all the information here and uh, we're taking registrations right now. So, um, Am I correct in saying that flag football's becoming is something that like the NFL is promoting more because of the fact, especially in the earlier um, years, because of the fact that CT uh, is becoming a, rather big uh, hot topic right now 
Well, I think I, I, I believe it's growing and getting more popular because you are seeing the NFL being involved in it more. And uh, when they took over and developed their league, um, it's something that kids can go, you know, I have I play NFL flag football. You know, it's it's legitimate. Um, so and I see the potential of it to continue to grow. Um, one of the things I was looking to do. In the future is I wanted to have a travel team to compete against other NFL uh, league cities. Uh, I talked to a few of them and right now they're not, they're not interested at this point, but it's not to say in the future we can't have it. Cause I would like to prove a point how, what, what kind of athletes we have here in Lamar. So uh, I think they're just scared of us is basically what I, I, I got. They, they knew we would win. So are there any other uh, cities in the Valley that do to do this program to do the NFL. Yes. Uh, currently right now, um, we have Tulare and Visalia and there might be more around. I haven't reached out past those areas. I, I do have to agree with you. That kind of sounds iffy that those people don't, the, I mean, that's not that far to travel yeah. if they're, if they're, <laughs> I agree. It does sound like they're scared if <laughs> they don't want to travel. 30 minutes across the valley. <laughs> yeah. I, I just think at this point, they're kind of a wreck thing. They're looking at, you know, doing their program and then moving on to the next one. Uh, a couple of people shared with me that. And then uh, I just think that others are like, yeah, you know, we'd have to put, it, it, it becomes, you know, like Hanford and Lamore, you know, with the, uh, the, uh, what is it? The milk, uh, I'm sorry. Milk can. Milk can. It's yeah. a rivalry. So I think, it's a robbery and I, I don't know necessarily if, uh, you know, they want to get caught up in that because we do produce, you, if you look in the NFL, we produced a lot of uh, professional football athletes here and uh, we have a lot of talent. When you see these kids play, we've got a lot of talent here. So they may not. So I, I, I would imagine that the travel team would be almost like a all-star team for our, um, from our people. Yeah. We would start out with an age group that both all, you know, whatever cities were get involved that we could fill. So we would take our all-stars and then we would travel with them and do basically like a, just a playoff game or, or depending on how many people participated. So, yeah, I was about to say, it, so it sounds like it would be kind of like a post season thing uh, where, you know, it's, it's not that it wouldn't be that many games, especially if it's, I forgot. Did you say there was another city, other cities aside from Visalia and Tulare? There are other cities, but I haven't reached out to them. I, I couldn't tell you offhand all the other cities are in the NFL. If you go on the NFL website, you'll see if you look under the flag football, it'll tell you the communities that are involved with it. Um, I mean, just for those, I mean, just those three cities. I mean, uh, you could, I don't know, you call it the Square League, and you just have a round robin, and then best. Mm -hmm. team wins or something like that yeah that's essentially what we do we would do something uh, just a one day type thing you know if we had depending on how many we would have we would we're we started last year doing the seventh and eighth graders we did a, a runoff we took the the ones that finished uh third and fourth and then uh, they played each other to see who you know who was better between the third and fourth and we took first and second and, and they played to see who would win and we we had a little trophy that we gave game and stuff like that. We, we don't want to make it too competitive um, because then it, everything starts mattering uh, when it comes to calls and everybody sees things differently and the referees are under enough pressure as it is, but we wanted just to kind of have a day thing that was pretty, pretty cool for the kids. So we tried it and everybody that participated, we, we had a good participation. Parents were great. Kids were great. Everybody's respectful. We didn't have that. So, well, in in the end, these in the end, these things. It's like obviously you want to you know encourage the the kids in competition stuff like that. But mm -hmm. in the end, it, you know, it, it's it's a kids. It's yeah, it's a kids some um, thing. I mean, it's you're not trying to do it very seriously. Well, it's recreation. Yeah, have you ever about. watch kids sports? Yeah, there's it, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be as intense as it should be. I I I know it's it's like I'm just like just let the kids have fun. Don't make yeah. it so so yeah. stressful. We we have to remind the parents a lot when we're out there. Um, we have to 
you know, have a talk sometimes with them and explain to them it's, it is recreation. There's no contracts. There's no uh, NFL scouts, uh, scouts here. Correct. So yeah. we're here to have fun. And we're, that's what recreation is all about. We're here to have fun. We're here to help the kids exercise, you know, get out of the house, but not play games, you know, get out like, you know, they should and uh, try to, you know, get a healthier community and things like that. And they really seem to enjoy it because a lot of the kids that, don't like tackle football, uh, don't have another option. So when we started doing this, uh, they got, they got to play football without, you know, being tackled because sometimes, you know, it looks cool. And then when the first time you get hit, sometimes kids will go, "Eh, you know, I, I I don't, this isn't for me. So, um, not everyone's a contact sport person. Correct. Yeah. And, and honestly, this takes a lot of skill when you play flag football, it's, it's pretty skillful position because it's, yeah, there's a time limit on the quarterback, and then uh, he's got to get the ball off, and he can't just run. There's, it it takes a lot. So, but uh, how's so, the how's the participation? Uh, we do really well. I you know I, I apologize for not having the exact figures on that. Um, I believe, don't quote me, but I believe we had four hundred kids oh. in it. Um, Last year, I think, was our largest participation. Uh, the reason we have to cap a lot of it is because we just don't have enough time in a day. We try to get the peewees in. We only have three fields, so we're kind of limited on space. And so we don't want to we don't want to use up everybody's Saturday on that uh, to where the whole thing, you know, their whole Saturday is for that. But uh, uh, it seems to be a good balance that we have going on right now. And we have a lot of, a lot of kids. And, we, you know, we have, depending on, excuse me, depending on the age group, you know, there'll be, there could be 10 kids on a team, 12, just depending on how many people yeah, we get. 30 teams there yeah. at least. Right. And then we have, it's co-ed also. So it's pretty cool. You see a lot of, a lot of uh, boys and girls out there having a good time. And I tell you some of the girls, uh, when I've watched them, uh, they, they can compete. They're, they're pretty okay. good. So. And it's all at Lions Park. Correct. Yes. And one of the things that we run across being at this uh, time of the year is uh, we do get rains, even though it doesn't rain in California. (laughs) Last couple of years, we've been seeing that. And then the canal district also discharges in that and it's a pounding basin out there. So uh, sometimes we're limited to just two fields because the water will engulf one of the other fields. So, um, so sometimes, you know, it just happens, but uh, it's a good thing. We do need to rain and all that stuff. So, yeah, how's uh how's the playing field right now? Is it all right now? It's it's not in shape. I mean, yeah. it's um, you know the park uh, is maintained the best it can. But when we start flag football, up, we start going out there and start sanding everything and try to level things out and make it the best possible. You know, we're fighting squirrels and gophers M- mostly now. We're seeming to be fighting squirrels. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but um, but for the most part. Um, we start working on it, you know, ahead of time, because if we get out there too soon, it gets tore up again yeah. with the public out there and stuff. Is there a budget for you to keep up with maintenance and all that stuff to be able, or is it all? Close? It, we have a, you mean I took a shower and did all the stuff? Yeah, yeah. We're the, we're the fun department, so you can. <laughs> Since I'm here in this air conditioning, I think I'm There you go. There you go. As far as a budget, there's a maintenance budget that is. Um, for the maintenance division, um, the, the parks have been, uh, outsourced. And so they have a budget to do certain things. And then my budget, uh, for the rec department is more for the buying the jerseys, the footballs, all the equipment and that type of stuff. Okay. So, but, um, we're always trying to, you know, improve the park, but again, it's a basin first Yeah. and, uh, it's pretty sandy out there. We've moved 
I had to move the fields again last year to try to take advantage of where the the growth is on the grass. Uh, Bermuda, it's amazing. Bermuda will always, it could grow on concrete as long as it has water and sunshine. But yeah. out there, it seems like there's pockets out there. I just can't get it to grow. And we've we've seeded it. We've done all kinds of stuff. It just doesn't want to take. And we don't have the best irrigation system. That's usually most of the issue that we have. It's not a complete irrigation system out there. So there's a certain section that has no irrigation whatsoever because it was intended just to be a basin. So, yeah. So, yeah. Is is there any way that there's like a long-term solution to maybe trying to get rid of the, of the ground squirrels or are they just, are they just one of those species that are going to find a way well, to get into? Yeah. Kind things? of getting off the subject. Uh, we are working on that. We do have a machine and we are working on that, but the, the issue we run across with squirrels is they seem to populate all the time. So when you think you're kind of getting a handle on it, they, there's a next generation that comes through. But uh, we are working. We do have a machine for that. And uh, the maintenance department, Nick Machado, is working with the contractor to do the best they can. So Don't beat them. Yeah. There's people I, that, uh, people that uh, live over by Heritage Park and people go out there feeding the squirrels if if anything if a squirrel gets in my my view <laughs> my den i like to speed up <laughs> yeah but uh but yes we are we are we try to do everything we can so um oh yeah you could do hawks okay next program yeah. that you got. so the next one we have staying on track here um uh, is this one right here is our back to school supply and backpack drive that we're doing and this is something i believe we started i think it was last year if i'm not mistaken uh, the mayor madam mayor would know we started it last year it was a it was a great event we had uh, all kinds of people helping we had people donating the thing about lamore is we we have one of the best communities that people will uh get behind us and they'll donate and uh, we had tons of backpack um, backpacks um, Madam Mayor, she had a bunch of them that she donated and also her church was out there and it was, it was, it was pretty awesome to see all the people participating and stuff like that. So, um, this essentially is just what we start putting the flyers out. We'll put, uh, brand new trash cans in the rec center and we just ask people to come in and whatever they can donate just to drop in the cans and stuff like that. And we filled up quite a few cans last year. I can't remember offhand, but I think we had probably six or eight of those, you know, your trash cans. We had those filled and, uh, and that didn't include the backpacks. That was just, you know, crayons and paper and all that good stuff. Well, I would imagine that, you know, you just go to a place like Dollar Tree and spend, you know, however many bucks and you could just, you could get a bunch of that and just toss it into one of those bins. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's that. Um, so again, this is just more information on that. And then our, to go along with that, we kind of, we do this thing uh, that they started last year called the uh, uh, summer bash. And that's when we go out to veterans Memorial park and we set up, we have games, uh, we have vendors out there. We'll have bounce houses. Um, last year, that's where we gave the backpack. We were going to go to the schools but we decided to uh, bring the backpacks out there and the parents stood in line. And uh, again, our, our mayor was gracious enough to help us out and uh, her, her uh, church uh, community, they were all there and they helped pass out uh, kids would come up, pick their backpack and take it. And the smiles on their faces and, and the relief on parents' faces were, were definitely worth it. So it was pretty, pretty awesome. Madam but, mayor sounds like a saint. Okay, well, <laughs> that's what I refer to her as Madam Mayor. So, but um, but no, it was a great time. We had the service clubs out there. Now, this right now, we're not advertising this brochure because we have to get commitments from the service clubs. They've been gracious enough to help us uh, last year. We've got a request into them. So we're not posting this right now. I'm just giving this as information only for the commission and whoever's watching uh, the uh, YouTube. But uh once we get everything buttoned up and in line, uh, which I know our our service clubs will come in like they always do, and they'll uh, 
they'll save the day. So, uh, but if you haven't had a chance to be there, it's a pretty, pretty awesome time. Uh, there's no cost to the public. The kids enjoy it. They have a good time out there. It's a great community event. Last year we had a uh, dunk tank and uh, we had a lot of people who uh, were, were took in that. And, and uh, it was, it was a good time. Um, music, we have DJ, all that stuff. So it was, it was enjoyable. So, so that's currently what we kind of have in the works right now. That's not everything. It is just kind of bring you up to this point. And then uh, as we get more programs in, we'll, uh, we'll bring it to you and uh, let you know what we're doing. Thank you. Right. That's it. Thank you. So Thank you. now we're up to commission reports and requests. Is that, uh, That's you guys to ask if you need anything uh, from us that you would like us to work on or, you know, get you some information. Uh, if you have questions on stuff, I can try to answer. If I know off the top of my head, if you're asking for specific things, we would get that back to you on the next meeting. So, Well, I'm, I'm hoping that the uh, consultant that you're looking at hiring would recommend that we do something about the website. I mean, and this actually is the city's website. It does not sell the city very well. Uh, when the landing page includes uh, the Naval Air Station. Which, you know, okay, that's very nice. But uh, it really should, should be something a little bit more aesthetic. Okay. Um, kind of leaning on my background in that regard too, because I worked in marketing and advertising. And okay. We designed websites at the company I work for and oops. Okay. All right. But yeah. That's to me, that's something that uh, would certainly make the city appear more attractive to a uh, prospective home buyer or a resident or even a business that would like to come in here. Okay. All right. Sell the sizzle. Sell the sizzle. I like that. Volunteering. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Anything else? Anybody? Uh, is there any plans in the near future to possibly expand? Like, I I know that from the sound of it, we've got like you know lots and lots and lots of of use force as it is. But are, are there any plans to like expand into maybe other sports? Such as, you mean like, softball? Like I said, Pickleball? this 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 isn't everything we do. This is just what we have coming up, so you guys can understand what's current. It, we, I'm not, I didn't give you a whole year's worth of what we typically do. So, but when you say other sports, like what what were you specifically? Uh, well, I, wait a minute. Is that is that is that karate program at the? Is that is that like one of those private um like rent the space um? We it used to be one of our rec programs. Um, the issues we were running into is we were spending a lot of time chasing down uh, payments and logging, making sure people were there. So what we did, uh, our uh, past city manager wanted me to go ahead and go out and lease the spaces and let them run their program. So all of our programs that you see over there at the rec center, the cheerleading camp, the uh, karate, boxing, uh, we have uh, yoga, we have a dance uh, that goes on over there. Um, those are all uh, and little, there's a uh, little music makers and things like that, but those people are all leasing a space. So they have a lease with the city. And they pay us X amount of dollars for that, and they run their own program. And then they collect the, the fees. They collect the all their own fees, yeah. yeah, and they stay on top yeah. of that. makes it much easier. We just don't have a lot of staff, and it, it it just eats up. It was eating up all of our time because we were, you know, doing that stuff. But we, but what we have going on over there, it's yeah. it's quite busy. And that's a pretty common setup that you have, <laughs> where you have an individual who can teach something or can do some kind of training, and they will promote it themselves, they'll collect the money, and they essentially pay a fee to the city for the use of the facility. Um, Correct. It yeah. actually works out really well if you have fairly dedicated people that want to do that. And we encourage people. I've, I've talked, I would like to have music over there, some arts. There's a lot of different things that we've tried uh, starting up. 
uh, it's hard to get a commitment. Uh, and a lot of times when we were doing the program, we'd have an instructor who would commit and didn't show. Uh, this way, if they're renting the space, they have motivation to work on getting students yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, if you know anybody who's looking to do something or wants to try to start something, what we ask is that they come in and basically give us, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. Basically give us their a game plan. We want to see exactly what they want to do, uh, see if it makes sense. Uh, a lot of times we'll let them try. You know, we, we encourage them first to get some enrollments and things like that and kind of get momentum. And then we'll negotiate, you know, the space and, and the cost and stuff like that. So. I guess another uh, question um, piggybacking off of that is um, like, how, how are the, the businesses like the, um, the, fast food restaurant there and the CrossFit uh, working? Well, CrossFit, he leases his area over there and um, he does his own thing and uh, he's been very successful with that. Um, the kitchen, um, we are, I don't want to get into too much discu discussion on it at this point, but uh, and I can give you some more further information in the next the next uh, meeting, commissioner meeting about the kitchen. Anything else? I got stuff. <laughs> well, this is uh, my first meeting here, and I always like to start out with, Ray, what do you need from us? Well, you know, the first thing I think uh, is some fresh ideas, uh, support, um, what we try to do is we try to, I like to see people who are um, engaged in what we do, that they'll be there at the events. That helps us out quite a bit because we can always use the volunteers, the hours. And I think that also uh, helps them appreciate what we go through with, us, especially with our small, our small group. Now we're fortunate enough, uh, and I want to again give a a kudos to our maintenance department. Uh, Nick Machado on our maintenance department will help us. Um, and without them, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of things because we just don't have enough staff. Two people is pretty, pretty difficult to set up, but getting back to your question or your question was getting involved with the rec department, uh, coming for yourself to see the recreation center, see what you think of it. If you have ideas of what you think, uh, maybe we can make changes, you know, ideas, suggestions. Um, I'd like to see how the commission basically, you know, working with us and coming up with ideas that we could uh, share with the company that we hire and uh, help us make it happen. And then uh, then with your support, we could take those to city council and uh, see if we can get approval uh, to move on those things. I know our city council is really good about that stuff. So uh, I know they all care about recreation. So that would be, that'd be my answer is, you know, and get involved and uh, help us out. So I know you have two and a half employees and you're right. the half. I'm the half, yeah. Is that the allotted amount of full-time employees for your department? Correct. Or right are you now, just down people? Well, we had one person, Stephanie, who uh, moved on to another city. And so because of budge budgetary, uh, we decided that we could better use the money instead of another rec coordinator was to get an administrator. Uh, one of the problems that Nyant and Trent have is that they're answering phone and taking reservations. So it takes away from programming. So uh, we've asked city council and with approval, we'll hire another person and that person will be in charge of phones and, and taking that type of stuff, which will help free the other two up to be able to do their job. So right now that's what we're looking for. And we're very grateful to even get that because the, you know, until it gets approved um, it's, it's a struggle. You know, so we kind of see some light at the end right now with with that. And then as as things improve, which they will with our budgets and stuff like that, then uh, I, I I see us expanding and growing. Uh, we ha again, we have a great community. I see people are active and involved uh, when you see people at the rec center all the time, especially weekends, games. It's amazing to see how many people we actually don't have enough parking. And we we're talking about possibly maybe expanding 
uh, one of our parking areas and opening it up to the public also. But, uh, but yeah. Does the sports, would the sports that we offer now, would that, you know, obviously we make money on it somehow. Would that help fund? Can you use that funding to hire more people? Or is that a totally different budgeting type of it's, scenario? It's a different. It's a different part of the budget. Yes, we we budget for staff, and then of course, when you hire somebody, as you all well know, there's it's not just what they're getting paid; it's all the benefits. Oh, it's that go all with benefits. It. So, and, and you know, we're we're general fund. So, um, one of the things that you know I can bring up at this point is if a council does approve a tax. Uh, rate increase allow not them approve it but at least approve it to be put on the ballot uh, that would help quite a bit too because then we would have more funds to help with the budget and stuff like that and eventually we'll be able to get grow again and get more people when i worked in the rec department from the beginning we had we at one point we got uh, we had let's see one two four five we had five people full-time staff and uh even with five we were complaining we couldn't keep up with everything, but, uh, but typically those programs, the, like the, uh, flag football program don't make a lot of money, if any at all for the city. It's mainly done to, well, think of it as a nonprofit. Um, oh yeah, not, they, they make some money because yeah, I mean, you're charging a hundred dollars a player in the your program union. somehow, or yeah. Or in the case of like with the city, it might include having to do field maintenance and, repair and that kind of thing so there's not a lot of wiggle room in terms of of uh, monies coming in off of programs like that we, we well, that's why i was asking all the budget questions yeah well, <laughs> well we we try to when we we do it we're not we're not trying to be a profit center where we are you know we budget to to cover our costs and if we have some profit left over and we we try to run programs that a balance of stuff that gives back to the community at no charge and then stuff that covers the cost to run that program. The The unfortunate part is we're still running in a deficit uh, in our department and recreation because we don't have enough to cover the wages and stuff like that. Uh, the programming we're pretty much covering, but it's it's the wages. And uh, But we've been fortunate enough to be open, you know, for many, many years. And uh, I think it's vital that, you know, the city keep a recreation uh, because it's, it, I think it'd be detrimental if they ever got rid of it. And uh, I think the poli police department would probably back that up too, because when kids don't have anything to do, then they start destroying things. Oh, yeah. That's, so, yeah. but for the most part, you know, we look at, we look at all of our programs and then there's a fine line, you know, we can't, we try to keep things affordable. We do have a fund that for people who qualify, they come in and show us their income and stuff like that. We do have an assistance that we do help like them a with. Hardship waiver. Hardship, yes. And so we do we do assist with that. And um, you know, we're always there to try to do what we can for people and uh to help assist to get the kids involved and stuff like that. But uh yeah, there's there's some things that are tough because we've uh, been criticized in the past for certain things. And unfortunately. A lot of the programs we, we used to have went away because we didn't have the participation. So if we're not getting anybody to sign up, we can't run a program. Yeah. So if we don't meet, you know, as an example would be soccer, we have different age groups. If we can't get enough in that age group, then we can't run that division. Yeah. So, but uh, anyway, but yeah, it's, uh, but we're fortunate enough on the budget. The uh, city council always passes what we request we always would like to have more. I think every department would tell you that. Oh, yeah. but, you uh, always want more. Yeah, always want more. You always want more. But um, I think we do. I think we do the best job we can with what we have to work with. And and if you've been to some of our events for people like Easter, it's all put on. We have a huge turnout. We uh, started doing the. Uh, uh, this is be the third year for uh, Jingle and Mingle. We do a great big thing downtown for all the people. It's all free to, for everybody and except for the vendors, but uh, it's a great turnout. It's great. We get to be involved with the fire department, putting up the tree. It's a whole big, whole big thing. And I think it's a, uh, it's great. Our, our mayor and uh, one of our uh, other uh, council members kind of gave us, 
they they gave us the shot in the arm and said this is something we'd like to see some sort of event so we kind of worked on it and uh i have to thank stephanie and nyan and uh, of course the council members and the mayor for uh you know coming up with suggestions stuff like that so again that's where you know we didn't really have a rec commission but it'd be nice you know to be able to turn to you guys now and say hey what do you think you know what are the ideas you have yeah because i think we need to i mean i'd like to call myself an athlete but you know we would we need to compete you know what i mean so yeah i know i've talked with some people and i've brought up you know something at a park like a farmer's market kind of thing like mm -hmm. hanford's got right you know and it, it may be not in a park but we can make it a park nexus so that way we have some type of jurisdiction over it um because yeah we need to market ourselves like you were saying um and i think it would be good for us absolutely i it, agree it would make us grow yeah because we're growing one one way or another yeah yeah it's coming so yeah we have thirteen thousand people seven miles south of us well southwest of us so i mean mm -hmm. we got a good market to where we could attract a lot more people business and all that stuff but yeah you'll give me on a whole nother tangent on that one i got one more thing for you okay. buddy uh adult sports i'm okay. getting hit up about softball stuff mm -hmm. and all that um do we still do softball or we is... don't we stopped doing softball for numerous numerous reasons um we go well, with we... being one of them well, this was even prior to COVID. It was we were we were having issues with um, the drinking that was being involved, and um, my son's friends played in softball. They did Hanford and Lamore and all that, and we were kind of known as the beer league or the alcohol league, whatever. <laughs> but uh, we started running into that, and then we started having people putting, you know, cork bats, and we had people who were. Um, saying, you know, the umpires were not calling the plays correctly. It was all one-sided. It, it turned into a lot of management. And then um, it got to where, you know, it was just, it was like a lot for us to deal with in the rec department. We're like, man, you know, you, your guys are, you know, you're great, but it's, it takes a lot of work to run the league. And um we also had some issues uh, that because of maintenance and the staffing, uh, we got very limited staffing, so they couldn't prepare the fields anymore. And so we asked the softball leagues uh, that if they wanted to do, they could take care of it. We have the bases and the chalk and they could start doing it. And it, it was going well for a while. And then uh, we had a little Toro that we used to let them use to drag the fields and then uh somebody stole that and burned it up over there and we were never able to budget to replace it so then it turned into we were sometimes driving our truck out there and trying to do the field it just we just didn't have the the staff capacity and it just kind of went away uh i've had several people come to me they want to start it up again. I said, that's great. Why don't you start your league? You run your league and we'll, we'll rent the fields to you. And I just don't, I don't get any traction. Nobody follows up. Well, nobody wants it's, to be in it's charge. It's kind of an ongoing issue that uh, I, I've been involved with different softball organizations over the years. And for instance, in the city of Paso Robles, we had a huge softball program, but it was kind of beginning to dwindle because of the fees that the city was having to charge. So we formed an association and it was a nonprofit association. Um, and that worked really well for a while. We hired the umpires. We had a softball coordinator who oversaw the program. We had a, a board that, that kind of oversaw the rules and the leagues themselves. And it worked great for a while, but you have to have that infrastructure within that organization to keep it going. And once you start losing one or two people, things start falling apart. And uh, right. suddenly we're not being able to find umpires, uh, qualified umpires. Um, we even sent them to training, or promised them training anyway, and that kind of fell apart. So it just, it's kind of an ongoing thing that you wind up having to deal with constantly with, with a program like that. 
And yeah, softball was just one of them. Basketball was an even bigger issue uh, because now you got guys who think they're, you know, Michael Jordan and it takes yeah. all the fun and recreation part of it out and it becomes kind of a showboat. You know? Yeah. So I guess my question is, what is our plan then with those fields? With I'm sorry, with what? With Vieira fields. What are we? Well, we we have people that go out there and use them. Uh, we have people will come out and rent them, and we do have a price for that. And they get the bases and they do all their own setup and they they run their whatever they're doing and then they bring it back to us. So uh, we have that. And then essentially, um, when tackle uh, football. Uh, the, yeah, I uh, see them practicing. Yeah, out they'll go out now. there and they'll they'll actually rent the park and take just about every space out there to do that. And so uh that that's another thing that gets used uh for. But as far as softball, we you know, we tell people that I get calls uh or I will get calls, I'll get calls too and ask if they can uh, use the park and I say absolutely, you know, and there, is there a cost? Not unless you're running a league, no, you can uh you can go out there and play. And you'll see people out there with, uh, I've seen, I don't know, past few weeks, there's people out there with, you know, practicing, hitting softballs. And I see all the yellow ones out there in the field and stuff like that. But again, it's it's kind of hard, too, to maintain it because that is a basin. So, you know, yeah. a lot of our parks are basins first. And so when we get the water that gets in there, then we start getting divots. And, of course, we get the ground squirrels, gophers, uh those types of things so but uh but they they do get utilized we're just not we're just not making money off of them so to speak with a league yeah um so this is one of those rather unconventional things but um uh so for like an adult um league have we explored maybe something like kickball like i said i know that sounds very unconventional but that is something that you know, it's, it's, there's not a lot. I don't, I don't know if there's like official rules, but to, to me, it seems like there is, they, the, they have leagues. Yeah. But it's so it, it, it sounds to me like that would kind of be something that, you know, the standard might be a little bit more manageable. Again, this is one of those unconventional throwing them out there type things. They well, have the same problem here with the softball. There would be lots of alcohol involved yeah. in kickball. Yeah, it's well. One of the pro <laughs> well, why don't we just make it a zero? Well, we do. Tolerance. We have an ordinance, but again, you know, people will put it in different containers. You know, whatever they do, they do. So you're not going to stop it. It just it is what it is. Uh, you know, if we had the resources and had somebody out there, an officer or something like that, but that's just not practical. But the the one of the big things we run across, we we did used to have adult. Um, sports you know we we had an adult um flag football league for example and it was pretty cool it was amazing to see just how quickly and fast these guys could move they were also crashing into each other and then they were we started having issues with fighting and you you know with the referees you're trying to control and then we had one really bad one where the two guys collided and uh, the ambulance had to come out so you run a lot higher risk when you're running an adult program of having a lot of staff and, and keeping control because people, you know, their tempers and sometimes they don't think that that hit was correct. But it's just difficult. Um, as you stated, it's just hard to keep. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we we start running across. That was one of the issues, too. We used to run across with uh, softball. We We would hire, you know, an umpire. And then the next thing we know, the umpire hired somebody else to do his job mm -hmm. and then that guy hired his daughter you know and we're like who what's going on here you know why are we why do we have this yeah. it, it's just hard and so that's why we ask you bring up you know you come to us with your league and you run your league and rent the fields and you know it's all on you and that's where they go no we're not really wanting to do that but we're open to suggestions i mean if you have ideas suggestions you know during you know, kickball there. Yeah. I don't know if there's a big need. That's why when we get somebody, you know, hired to come up with this stuff, those will be questionnaires and you can raise those questions and uh, we'll see what kind of responses we get. You know, if we get three responses, we're definitely not going to do, 
you know, that because there's just nothing there. If people want to do it on their own, it's a park they can go do it. So, so one one other unconventional thing I was thinking of going more towards um back to um you know youth uh participation. Um, who, who that, so that skate park that's, um, in downtown by the train tracks, uh, does that, is that under the parks and rec, um, uh, jurisdiction or is that just a general city? Um, it's, it's not really under parks and rec. We don't rent it to anybody or anything like that, unless there's somebody who wants to rent the venue for an event, but it's typically, it's just there for the for the kids to and adults to use and it's maintained um by city maintenance staff and I, by maintaining uh cleaning up stuff things like that it's concrete there's really not a whole lot to maintain if they if they tear or, or, or uh, cut into the chain link fence then we have to do those repairs things like that but that's just that's just something out there for people to to utilize so it's not it's not monitored or anything like that well it- again unconventional idea but um you know like maybe some kind of an uh league with regards to you know skating possibly it, that that that's i it's again very unconventional but it gets kids involved and as you said adults also do it so you know it's 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 an idea um I know that all the other things that have been brought up are kind of, have kind of had issues, but if, um, especially if this community hasn't done that, I mean, it's, it's there. And as you said, youth and adults go there. So why not encourage more, um, participation from, you know, a, from a, you know, a group that's going to be there anyways, why not have them have more fun? And kind of, and you know, in a way to, um, to you know, to have fun in the community and have something to do. Well, answering your question, I mean, we have in the past we've had competitions out there. We've had different, different things, but uh, the skate park is kind of a unique thing because if you start doing those types of things and you got to have somebody out there monitoring and uh, because of the, you know, you don't want people getting hurt and that type of stuff. We just haven't really had a lot of people ask for a league, so to speak, or something like that. I mean, the kids generally go out there. Some adults will teach them. Uh, There are people involved. Um, We have a skate shop right across the street. He gets involved with kids and stuff like that. Uh, skating is kind of like bicycling and stuff like that. I mean, it's as long as you have a place to do it, that you're not going to get in trouble. That's kind of what that skate park was intended to do. Um, but if you have ideas or you have, you know, where we could put something together where, you know, again, we could entertain, but again, I think it goes back to, we'll see what kind of responses we get. Now we did try it inside the rec center. We did try and the issue we ran across is the kids did not want to put helmets on and pads and all that stuff. And uh, so that was it. They said, no, we're not going to do it. So they, they didn't show up. Uh, so. You run into all kinds of liability issues and stuff like that. Well, the, the, as we said, the, the parks there anyway, is the, the likelihood of getting injured is, you know, just as high as if we did it or didn't do it. Yeah. But if it's like a city function though, you're opening yourself up to liability. Well, back when we did, well, it's, it's it's like back when, when we did the, the, the karate, I mean, you still had the, you know, the liability there and you still had to have people fill out waivers. So again, right. again, it, 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 it's another one of those things where I'm, I mean, theoretically, God forbid this happened, but you know, you could have a kid this afternoon trip and crack his skull and then you know it's like well who do you sue or something you know something along those regards i mean the the liability is just always going to be there regardless of whether you have something there or not it's like similar to how you know you can have a kid running around in a park bonk his head on one of the the playground equipment and you know it's it's there so the, the the liability is just always going to be there and but i think it's a little bit different liability when um 
like, for example, you mentioned karate. Uh, when we were running the program, um, we were in control. It was non-contact. When we outsourced it right now where he's leasing, he gives an insurance policy additionally insured to the city. So if somebody gets hurt, the city's covered by that. If we do a skating event, and as he had mentioned, if, if somebody gets hurt during our event, there's it goes back to the city. So um, it, it's, it's, is it, you know, you have to kind of balance things out and decide whether or not is the risk worth it and, and demand, you know, where I, to be quite honest with you, I've not had very many people ever come up and say, Hey, we want to do tournaments. I mean, they, they'll do skate offs or kids will do YouTube videos. You can go on YouTube and see all kinds of that. Uh, but they generally put that together themselves. They have a, a, a association or whatever, and they get involved. We've had, uh, was it Tony Hawk? I think is his name. He came out and uh, was out there and a bunch of kids showed up. Uh, I've been out there when we've had tournaments and we, we put on not a tournament. I shouldn't use that phrase, but we put on a skating competition and we cooked hot dogs and brought kids in and that kind of stuff. And uh, sounds like a tournament to me. Well, not it, technically it's not a tournament, but it's just, it was just a kind of a skate off thing where, you know, they got to show their skills and then they had judges that would rate them, you know, and tell them, you know, you, this and that. So, um, but it just didn't really get a lot of traction. I mean, it, it, it was great, but it, you know, it wasn't something that people kept saying, Hey, can we get, continue this? It's uh, so a lot of people were upset because the park was being used, you know, and they weren't able to use it and uh, they didn't want to sign up for that. So, but anyway, you know, I, I think we're kind of beating a dead horse here on the skate park, but essentially um, again, great idea. We can, you know, we can suggest things like that to this company and see what they come up with. But right now that skate park is just intended like anything else, a park that has playground equipment. That's just something the public can go in and, and utilize. So at this point, basically anything that um, ha there's been issues with or that um, there's not a whole lot of demand for, we're just outsourcing it. I mean, that, that kind no. of sounds like the... No, that's not true. We've outsourced because we've had, it's, it's a lot of stress and strain on our staff to chase people down for payments and making sure that if there's 20 people enrolled and we have 30, 10 of them didn't pay. So we turned it over to the instructors to run their program and manage their program and collect their pay while they lease the space. I, I know dozens of parks and rec programs that do the same thing. Uh, the instructor is the guy in charge. He, he pays a rental fee to the, to the city and it's up to him to collect the fees from the students or the participants. That's how it's done. What Anything else? Think? Ray, uh, yes. to go back to the park thing for the uh, RFP thing we're gonna do. Yes. Does the city own any property to add parks now? I'm not aware of anything uh, that would be, well, I guess Christy could answer that, but I don't believe we have anything that's designated uh, a park area that we own uh, because the new subdivisions that go in, it's required that they put in pocket parks. So at this time, I don't believe we own anything. We would have to purchase something. We would have to purchase. That correct, Christy? Yeah. So, no. Okay. And then my last thing is uh, the last city council meeting, we had a public comment from soccer mm -hmm. um, ask about their contract and all that. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any type of jurisdiction over that? Or are we just more like a, an advisory committee or does that go through city council and risk management and all that? Because I no, she was told by somebody that it's trespassing and call the cops, which I think is absolutely insane because it's a city park. And if you sign a contract, does that contract specify that they have every inch of that park, including the baseball diamonds? 
Well, not to get into too much detail on that. Yes, there is a there is a lease agreement that states that they are to you they can utilize the park during their time, August first through the second week of November. Uh, they do are supposed to give us a schedule where we can schedule things when they don't have anything going. The issues that she was having out there is that we've had people because it is a park like any of our parks, if we rent it out or lease it, you have rights to that piece. So if there's an issue, as we tell people, like if you rent the pavilion and we put a sign up says it's your rental and somebody's there and they don't want to leave, we tell them you have to call the PD, PD will let them know and then they'll move on. So as we explain to them that if there is somebody out there, which, um, we kind of found out a lot of it is people from not in this area, just people who are trying to find a spot in practice uh, were asked to leave and they didn't want to. So we instruct her to go ahead and call PD. We have signage. We put up signs that said it's, you know, it's rented or leased, I should say. Um, one of the things I'm going to be addressing with her, I, I've got a meeting scheduled with her to go through the contract, uh, but I've asked that we're going to put a, a our, one of our message boards up in the parking area to state that, uh, you know, it's leased at this point um, in their contract. Again, I don't want to get into too, too much detail, but they're responsible for signage, not the city. And, you know, it's just, it's unfortunate, but it's also a good problem uh, that was stated at the last council meeting that, you know, we have people who want to utilize the parks and stuff like that. I think sometimes what happens out there, uh, my observation is that when they see the park and they see that there's a lot of open area because they're not using every square inch of it. Yeah. Of course, your instinct, you see baseball field out there, you got your team and they don't have a lot of places to practice. So they go out there and, you know, it's a matter of communicating with them, uh, working with them. Um, we've asked, you know, both parties to work with each other. And I think, you know, like for the most part, there's been people who do, but there's people who won't. And so it, the police have to get involved. I don't have any authority to go out there and do that other than say, I will contact the police department, you know, because of this is leased out at this point. So, so I guess my question is, is do they lease literally the entire park, including the baseball diamonds? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's, I've got a, I, well, I don't have it with me. I have my And I'm not against that or anything. I'm just yeah. trying to figure out that way no, everybody they, they do. out. Everybody knows what's going on that way. Yeah. There's no, because I think that's the problem is nobody knows. Well, we, we do, we, we communicate, we talk to, we talk to the different leagues and a lot of it we're finding it's not our people because when we go out there or what has been called, it's been people out of the area. Yeah. Um, like travel ball teams and travel stuff. ball teams. Yeah. And that's been a lot of the issue that we've run across. And for the most part, most of our people that are involved in little league and that type of stuff are very respectful and they've been respectful. The more uh, youth soccer league has also said, that's fine. We're not using that area. You go ahead and use it. Just don't go any further and don't hit, you know, balls out here. Um, you know, you try to coexist and yeah, uh, I definitely think there's a way we can co-mingle out there between yeah, the soccer, the, baseball, everything else that's going on out there. Right. But the agreement does state that they do control it pretty much that whole park during their time frame. And then we can use utilize it when they're not utilizing it. They're supposed to give us a schedule to tell us when those days are. And so um, I've requested that again and they're supposed to give us the schedule of all that stuff but uh if you look at it in their lease it names all the fields out there and mm -hmm. i do have at the rec center there is a essentially a, a eight and a half by 11 it sh shows all the different fields and all that stuff and literally there's some pockets that they're not u utilizing so uh, based on the name but it also because a lot of the stuff is rectangular it it encroaches into those areas. So mm -hmm. you literally might have a baseball field, but the outfield is all taken up by soccer. So literally you can't. And I believe the language was changed on enough to say that uh, pretty much when they have it, it, they have every, every part of it. 
because it's too hard to define. We don't have a way to go out there and say, okay, this section here is, you know, the uh, Machado section. This is that area you could practice right here. And who's that contract with? Is that with Lemoore Youth Soccer or yes. is that a different no, organization? It's with, with Lemoore Youth Soccer League. Yes. And they operate year round? No. No, they only, uh, for us, they only operate from August 1st to the second week of November. And then they have District 7 that has the ability to That's uh, the comp do a, right? as a comp, yeah, as a, on a Sunday. And they're supposed to give us a schedule of when those are happening. But no, the rest of the year, no. So, okay. So when you say travel ball teams, um, they would have to be coming to play against someone here. So who is it here? Who would they who they would be playing against? No, they're not playing against anybody. They're just travel ball. They're looking for a place to practice. Yeah, it's practice. So they see a spot and they 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 try to utilize that. And that is a beautiful complex. It's a uh, it's well taken care of. And so it's very enticing when you drive by and you see everything out there and you don't see people specifically on the clay. So they're at natural instinct of, hey, we'll get out and we'll, you know, hit some balls and do that kind of stuff. But well, it's when when you say from outside the area, how far outside the area are we talking about? Are we talking about Stratford? Or are we talking about Hanford? Or what are we talking about? It could be any of those places. It it just we've had people from all over the area. So when you say outside of the area, you mean outside, outside of Lamore, who correct. aren't familiar with how we do business. Some of, some of them are because we do get some people from Hanford and they 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 know. But you know, it's just they see a spot and uh you know it seems like Hanford has more room than we do. Why would they have to come out here? Uh, I don't I can understand terrible. Stratford or you know other places, but there's a lot of teams in Hanford, and it's a lot easier to get a field here. Yeah, especially yeah. with travel ball. Yeah, it's 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 big. I mean, yeah. our little league fields. There's only I believe there's only three fields out there that are operational, so you know there's not a lot of space. So that again will be something that we'll look at with this to see if that's something that we can you know possibly purchase some property to uh, put in more uh, fields, you know, soccer, baseball, whatever, whatever the needs are. As, as has there been any, any exploration on properties that could be purchased at this point or uh, additional park space? No, because we, we don't have that information to back it up. If I were to go to a city council meeting and say, I'd like to buy this property, I don't have anything to say the reason why. So when I do a staff report, I have to give an explanation. So that's why this will be very helpful when we have this company hired. They will be able to give me facts and information that I can then go to council and show and uh, get approval for. I guess another question in terms of like fulfilling um, like additional space is that um, is there the possibility of like renting slash leasing like some of the property that the school districts own like you know the lamore high school has like has all those practice fields out there and um i don't know how much west hills has but is, is there that possibility that we could possibly do that to fulfill the needs rather than i'm not sure how lamore would work but i know that other school districts are very very reluctant to give um parks and recreation or private individuals any of their facility it just doesn't work um that's correct they actually come to us and ask us if they can rent areas out in our parks seems kind of one way doesn't it well i understand i i understand that you know their liability and their stuff so you know it, it's yeah you know uh, but yeah, it's just at this point, to answer your question, no, we, we've we talked before with the school and all that stuff. And plus, they, they're maintaining things for certain events and they don't want things getting tore up. That's why I like the soccer uh, complex is for youth only. It's not for adult because if the adults played out there, there would be no grass. So 
they're they're protected. But I understand they have a lot of money vested, and they want their their stuff taken care of. And uh, we get it. And plus, if people are just going out to practice and stuff like that, I don't know how it'd be feasible for us to rent and pay for something to allow people to go out there and not pay. I mean, it, it's it's yeah, it, it's it'd be tough because we don't have the finances for one and two. Um, I don't. I don't think we'll get any cooperation that way. The college possibly, but again, we would have to pay. And uh, we just don't have the funding to do that. That's why we'll need to see if we need to build parks. Well, because with the parks, I'm trying to think of where else to that we could expand. We're surrounded by farmland, essentially. And I know those farmers like really depend on that farmland. And so I don't realistically if we were to try to buy another park i don't know where else we could do it unless there's some kind of just land just sitting around that i haven't seen well there's always there's always property out there there's always land uh whether or not they want to sell it and whether or not it's zoned is another thing because if it's zoned for commercial agri yeah i mean agriculture but if it's if it were zoned to do commercial you can't put a park on it and the farmer's going to want to he can get more money for his property zone that than basing a park. The park's not going to pay top dollar as opposed to a developer coming in and uh, doing that. So, but there's, there's property around town, but again, it goes back to what, what is the need? And I can't answer that because I don't have any, anything to back up. I have my opinion and you may have your opinion, but that doesn't mean that, you know, it's we're, we're correct throughout the city. Yeah. Well, and then it goes in the problem of whether you do eminent domain or not, because I, I, I hate to point this out, but a park doesn't seem like something that would uh, be worth eminent domaining because then you have that kind of a whole controversy. Yeah, it's a whole nother thing. I don't I don't really I can't speak on that. I'm not I'm not an expert on that. And so. Anything else? We good? We good? Everybody good? Any? I'm, I'm sorry. You have a question? Public comment. Sure. We ask that you give us your name and. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, Carol Diaz. I live at 450 Ash Street. Um, I am a member of the Friends of the Kings County Library, and I don't know if um, you people are. Uh, familiar with our summer reading program that Friends of the Library sponsors through um, the Kings County Libraries. But coming up, there's six weeks of library, um, our children's programs, including puppets, there's Ron the Reptile, there's all kinds of things that are going on. They have they take part here at the Civic Auditorium because they don't fit in the library. But there's a program in Hanford at the Civic, Corcoran, at Kettleman, Stratford, Armona. I'm forgetting somebody or other. But anyway, it's a wonderful, wonderful program. And it goes on for six weeks. And it gr draws a great number of children right here to the area. And it's very, very enjoyable. And so I just wanted to make you aware of it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> You're welcome. By the way, you don't want a bunch of adults running around on a, a school campus because it's a security problem with children. Teacher. I don't. I don't think we were talking about adult programs being on on campuses. I think we were talking more the kids, but no. Uh, point taken. Yeah. Okay, our next regularly scheduled meeting is August 13th. And in the meantime, this one's done. <laughs>